Hey, what's going on, my friend? It's Jeff Newbert from ChasingStrength.com. And in today's video, we are going to discuss the other type of resistance training. So in the last video, we talked about a survey that I ran to my newsletter readers. Again, if you're not on my newsletter, we'll leave a link here in the description below. But uh, one thing that was for sure about the survey that I sent out is that everybody who responded saw and acknowledged the need, right? The need to train or work out, if you will. However, uh, three of the most common things people are frustrated with and needed help with, and this may or may not be you, I don't know, because you probably didn't take the survey, right? And the survey was anonymous, right? The, the things that people needed the most help with, the top three were consistency or staying consistent, the second was discipline, and the third was motivation, all right? Now, before I get to what all those have in common, I want to ask you a question, right? Have you ever experienced the following? I call it invisible pressure, right? We put some air quotes there, invisible pressure. It's like some kind of specter, right, that pushes back against you when it's time to train or work out, right? So it shows up in the following ways for many people. Maybe it's the feeling of having too much work on your plate left to do at the end of the day, right? Or maybe it's the the pressure of pressure is too strong of a word, right? The desire of spending time with your kids or being tired and having very little energy. Or one of the most common pushbacks is the sensation or the feeling of not feeling like it, right? I know I've experienced all those things. So here's another question. What does this specter of invisible pressure have to do with consistency, discipline, and motivation? Well, that's a great question. And the answer is this. All those feelings are experienced when you don't have a clear, well-defined, emotionally compelling goal around which you organize and marshal your training. Kind of like Maximus from Gladiator, right? Rallying his cavalry around him, yelling, on me, as he's riding down on the Huns in the opening scenes, right? The invisible pressure is actually nothing more than a test, right? It's really designed to see if you're serious about achieving your goal, all right? So when you have a clear, well-defined, emotionally compelling goal, the motivation, discipline, and consistency are baked into that goal. Here, let me give you an example. When I was 16 and a junior in high school, I broke my arm wrestling six days before our championship tournament. Now, as you can imagine, that was heartbreaking. So I loved wrestling so much at the time I vowed I would do whatever it took to win the championship the next year, which was my senior year and my last year wrestling. So the day I got my arm out of cast, I started weight training. Okay. I was standing in the hallway and outside of my locker, opened my locker. I took my book bag, which had a little loop, right? My backpack, which had a little loop on the top. And I put one book in there and I put that loop. I hung that loop on the fingers of my hand. I tried to hold that. And the bag, as you might expect, after having your arm in the cast and having limited range of motion and having, I think my arm was this big, okay? The width of my wrist all the way up here to my shoulder right there. Okay, that's how big my arm was. And I had, uh, I had like this much range of motion in it. That's how much I could wiggle it. So as you can imagine, after not moving your arm for 12 weeks, that bag, it yanked my arm straight down to the floor through a range of motion I hadn't used in the previous 12 weeks. The, the bag fell on the floor and I let out a holler that echoed down the hallway. Man, it hurt. So did I give up? Did I, did I quit, shake my head and say, this must not be meant to be since I didn't have any strength in my arm? Absolutely not. I almost said something else. Okay. So what I do in I just kept going. I executed my plan. I spent the entire summer in the weight room to build my strength. I ended up gaining 15 pounds. I ran cross country in the off season to build my aerobic system to provide a conditioning base for wrestling. I worked all summer long. I bagged groceries at the Air Force Base Commissary. I worked double shifts and I, you know, I did that to get cash so I could go and eat chicken sandwiches and pizza to fuel my workouts, right? I got up early, left the house at six or six 30 in the morning, whenever my dad left, cause I, you know, grabbed a ride with him into work which was at the Air Force Base. And we lived about 20, 30 minutes away. So, and he would pick me up at the commissary at the end of his shift, at the end of a long day, which is usually about 12 hours after we're both done with work. So what was the result? Well, I won. Now, what was the reason? The reason was I had a meaningful, emotionally compelling goal, right? And I worked my butt off to achieve that goal. Now, there's nothing special about me or unique. And I'm sure you have a very similar story or stories of your own that you can look back on in your own life and draw inspiration from 
to move you forward in this current phase of your life, right? So if you do, I strongly encourage that you revisit them. Use those stories to rebuild or build, I should say, new meaningful goals and commitments and to remind yourself that you're more than capable of doing it. So here's one of my modern day goals as a 51-year-old father of two. I, as I'm filming this video, I just turned 51. I have a boy who's about to be 13 and I have a girl who's just turned 10, all right? I want to be a strong, capable, and fun dad able to keep up with my kids, okay? Which is no mean feat because most both my kids, as I'm sure you are well aware if you have kids, they have lots of energy. But my kids seem to be, I guess, stronger than normal, all right? So when I roll around with them, they're pretty strong. So I've got to exert a lot of energy. So as a result, what do I do? Well, I train daily, be it with kettlebells, body weight exercises, barbell exercises, I train my strength, I train my conditioning, I train my mobility. It's all built into my training program. Well, why? What's my what's one of my driving motivations besides wanting to be a strong, capable, and fun dad, able to keep up with my kids? Well, I think primarily is because my dad was always unhealthy and sick, right? He and I stopped roughhousing or wrestling. If you're if you're a dad who's got a son, you know what that's like. And you you roll around with your son, it's it's great. Good time of bonding. So he and I stopped doing that when um, I was about nine, right? We had just transferred, transferred Air Force bases, and uh, he was working 12, 16-hour shifts, right? Sometimes 20, 24-hour shifts. And the, the, the reality is he was just too tired and didn't have the energy to, to you know, play with me. So like I said, my son's about to be 13. And as I, I don't know if I mentioned this or not, but he currently competes in gymnastics. He's done BJJ since he was five and he's done boxing or kickboxing since he's about seven. And he and I were just wrestling in the living room the other night before bed. And that's because he's strong as a young bull. So this old bull here, right? I have to stay ahead of him because one day that young bull is probably really going to want to test his metal, his strength, his young bull strength against this here old bull, old bull, not old bill, old bull. Plus, as a former wrestler, Olympic lifter, and college strength coach, I know the exercises, the strength, and the endurance that I need to be able to, to do that, right? To be able to keep up with him as he gets older and moves through his teenage years and into adulthood. So that's why I do what I do, okay? Side note here, I just want to put this out here on the table uh, in case you find yourself where I was, okay? Before my son was born, I was physically broken, right? So I had a major hip injuries, a major lower back injury, and 25 years of chronic knee pain. So as a result of spending, let's see, he was born in 2011. I had spent the previous five years, five or six years trying to do restoration work that did not work. So 18 months around his birth, once I found out that my wife was pregnant, she was about three months pregnant, I stopped screwing around, right? And I got super serious and I spent the next 18 months doing what I call restoration work. And I did it exclusively so that I wouldn't be the old dad, right? The guy on the sidelines, unable to play with his son, who was, you know, there, who looks like an old guy, withered, wrinkled, and broken down, and is actually an embarrassment to his kid, right? I did not want to be that dad. So my motivation to get healthy and move well again was thinking about robbing my son of his future, so being capable for my kids is my emotionally compelling goal. It's what keeps me going, or at least one of the things that keeps me going. Now, here's another thing for you to th consider, right? A point to bring up and to ponder as you try and figure out why you're doing what you're doing, right? Many times you need something that you're running from, okay? Away from, running away from just as much, if not more than something you're running towards. So for me... I'm running from my family history of heart disease, type 2 diabetes, Alzheimer, and an early death, right? I plan on going to about 120, right? And I still have over a half a lifetime to go. So I need to take care of the machine and keep things in good working order. So let me ask you a question. What is it that you're running from, right? If you don't know and you're struggling with consistency, motivation, or discipline, that's probably one of the reasons why. So here are some action steps for you, all right? Number one, take 30 minutes after you watch this video and go for a walk and figure out what it is you're running from, right? And then write that down on a three by five card and put it someplace you can see it. Number two, do the same thing with running towards. What is it that you are running towards? What is it that you want to accomplish and why do you want to accomplish that? Then write that same thing or, or write that thing down on that same three by five card, right? So you can see it. And then number three, decide on the minimum amount of time you can afford to spend achieving your goals, right? Right. Your desires, your running 
away from, I'm running from, and you're running toward, right? How much time? What's realistic? Okay. And I, I strongly suggest that you underestimate here. So don't say something like, oh, well, I'm going to train two hours a day, six days a week, because that's what I did when I was in my 20s and I was ripped and shredded and jacked. And now that I'm 45 and my life is exactly the same as it was when I was in my early 20s, I'm going to do exactly the same thing to get ripped, shredded and jacked. No, you're not, right? It just doesn't work that way. If you know that you can do 15 minutes a day, five days a week, then do that. If you know you can do 45 minutes, three times a week, then do that, okay? Now, once you have those three items dialed in, when you feel that inspect that inspector, that specter of invisible pressure, right? That we talked about at the beginning of this video. When you feel that push against you, when it comes time to work out, when it comes time to train, you'll be able to do the old head and arm throw toss and chase them away because you've got that three by five card right in front of you. Okay. So if you do this enough, you'll have all the motivation, discipline, and consistency you'll need to achieve your goals. However, some people need some more tools, right, to make the process easier. One such tool is an app. I've got a brand new kettlebell app, right? That you can log your workouts in. It's, I think it's pretty cool. I think it'll definitely help you, especially if you need motivation, consistency, and discipline. I'll leave a link in the description below. You can check it out if you'd like. All right. So hopefully you found this video helpful. If you did click the like button, if you're not already subscribed, please do so. And if you know somebody else who could benefit from this information, share this video with them. Okay. Until next time, my friend. Stay strong.